Hello, welcome to introduction to composites. Today is the fifth day of the ongoing week, which is the ninth week of this course. And we have been discussing over this week about uh, generalized Hooke's law. And what we have shown is that for a fully anisotropic material, we require 21 independent elastic constants, because the total number of constants initially we calculated was 81. Because of stress symmetry, it came down to 54. Because of strain symmetry, it came down to 36. And then for strain energy, uh, energy consideration reasons, the number finally came down and settled at 21. Now, we will look at some special types of materials and see that for, for those types of materials, what are the total number of elastic constants. So, we will start with an isotropic material, 21 constants, and for special materials, how does this number come down to? So, the first case we will look at is the case of special orthotropy. Okay. Now, what did we discuss in case of a special orthotropy? That if I apply an extensional stress sigma, let us say I apply only sigma 1 1 then it will only generate uh, epsilon 1 1, epsilon 2 2, epsilon 3 3, but it will not generate any shear strains. Okay. So, only ex so extensional stresses cause extensional strains and shear stresses cause shear strains. Similarly, if I pull it in epsilon 1 1 direction only, then it will generate only uh, stresses in other directions, but it will not necessarily generate shear strains. It will not generate shear strains. Okay. This is what it means. Physically, why would that be possible? Suppose the material is a piece of wood okay and let's say this is my two axis to be consistent consistent with this picture this is my three axis and this is my one axis and suppose all fibers are parallel to two axis so, when I look at this picture and I then the fibers at this end they look like this. We just see the tip of these fibers and the fibers run parallel to the two axis. This. So, this is the physical structure and if I pull such a structure in two direction if I pull such a structure in two direction and I only am pulling it in the length direction, there is no need that we should expect that it should deform in shear, right? Physically, intuitively, that is what we would uh, uh, expect and that is exactly what we see in actual experiments. So, if fibers are aligned, the material axis is aligned to the two axis, then I will not see any coupling between extensional strains, stresses and shear strains and shear stresses and extensional strains related to the two direction. Another scenario could be, another scenario could be that all fibers are parallel to one axis. Then also the coupling between shear and extension will not ex exist. And another case could be all fibers are parallel to three axis. In that case also the same thing would be expected. And then the fourth condition could be combination of these. So, here all fibers 
either parallel to one axis or two axis or three axis. So, it can be so you have some fibers going vertically up another bunch of fibers could be going like this along parallel to the two axis and the third set of fibers could be going perpendicular that is parallel to the one axis, but they are not at any angle they are only running either parallel to one axis or two axis or three axis they are not at any other angles. And even in this case if you pull a thing it will only become longer it will not you know shear stresses will generate only shear strains extensional stresses will generate only extensional strains and that is all dependent on the structure of the uh, material and the direction and if uh, the direction of the met, uh, forces is aligned to the material axis even in such a complicated material system even then shear stresses will produce only shear strains extensional stresses will produce only extensional strains right. So, this is what uh, it means if that is the case then how do these equations work out. Now, earlier we had shown that the number of because of strain energy considerations these are the only independent elastic constants right because this matrix is symmetric. So, for anisotropy full anisotropy we have 21. Now, if it is especially orthotropic what will happen? If it is especially orthotropic let us see how these number of so what, what is especially orthotropic for a material where fibers are running e parallel to one axis, two axis, three axis or all of them uh, simultaneously, but not at some other angle. Okay. So, it is not that some fibers are at 45 degrees to two axis they are either at 0 or they are at 90 okay. those are the only two options available. So, if that is the case then shear strains and extensional stresses will not be coupled and shear stresses and extensional strains will not be coupled that is what it means which means that this term will be 0, this term will be 0, this term will be 0 because this term couples sigma 1 1 with the shear strains. Okay. Similarly, this term will be 0, this term will be 0, this term will be 0. Okay. Similarly, this these three terms will be 0 because all these terms all these terms they couple the shear stresses with shear strains. So, I will put that in a different color. So, all these terms they will be 0 why as they couple extensional stresses to shear strain okay. and if we want that their connection should be not existent then these terms have to be 0. Okay. And then there are some other terms which are also going to be 0. So, what would those be? So, these terms will also be 0. These terms will also be 0. Why? Because if you so consider a situation, this is a material, and suppose this is a simple material, all the fibers are running in this direction. Huh? 
and I apply a shear strain like this. This is my 2 axis, this is 1 axis, this is 3 axis. So, I am applying tau 2 3. When I apply tau 2 3 in such a material, the only first thing is there is no going, there is no extensional strain which will be generated because I am applying only tau 2 3 and it is especially orthotropic. The second thing is it will this tau 2 3 will only generate. So, initially the block is like this and later the block will become like this. It will not shear in the 3 1 plane or in the 1 2 plane okay. and these terms 2 3 3 1, 2 3 1 2, 3 1 1 2 they couple shear in other planes also. So, they will also be 0. Okay. So, tau 3 2 3 will only generate epsilon 2 3, tau 3 1 will only generate epsilon 3 1 and tau 1 2 will only generate epsilon 1 2. Okay. So, if that is the case, then the total number of elastic constants in such a case is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So, a three dimensionally especially orthotropic solid will have nine independent elastic constants. So, a 3 D especially orthotropic material Three D, especially orthotropic material, it will have nine independent elastic constants. Okay. Now, either we can express the equations in the tensor form, which we just saw, or now I am going to make my notation a little simpler because otherwise I have to write sigma 1 1 and then I have to write E 1 1 1 1, E 1 1 1 2 and all that you know 4 4 notations. So, uh, so in non tensor notation in matrix non tensor form I will just write sigma 1, sigma 1 means sigma 1 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, tau 2 3, and here again remember I am not writing sigma 1 2, I am writing explicitly tau 2 3, I am not writing sigma 2 3, tau 3 1 and tau 1 2. So, these are 6 engineering stresses and they are related to a big matrix which is of size 6 by 6 and these are and the strains are epsilon 1, epsilon 2. So, this is not uh, tensor notation, it is engineering notation epsilon 3 and here I write gamma 2 3 engineering strain gamma 3 1, gamma 1 2 and the elastic constants are. So, we are now going to get rid of E notation and we will use C notation C 1 1. First index relates to stress, second index relates to strain and there are total 9 right. So, C 1 2, C 1 3, this matrix is symmetric C 2 2, C 2 3, C 3 3, C 4 4, C 5 5, and C 6 6 okay. and all other terms in this matrix all other terms this is all symmetry. Okay. So, these are the 6 const, uh, 9 constants. Okay. So, this is the stiffness matrix
for especially orthotropic orthotropic and it is a 3D orthotropic material material. So, these are not tensor equations. So, we have developed used the concept of tensors, we reduce the number of constants to 9 and now we are expressing it in non tensor notation, we are not using and this is special orthotropy which means that the material axes are aligned to the direction of loading, this is important to understand. The second case is we will talk about is transverse isotropy. transverse isotropy. So, first case which we had discussed was fully anisotropic, then we simplified it and especially orthotropic in 3D. Now, we will reduce it, make it even simpler and this is the case for a transverse isotropy. So, this is again for 3D materials. So, what does that mean? So, I so will explain this by example. Suppose, there is a material. So, let us take a rod, okay. let us say it is a wooden rod and this is my axis 1, this is my, so I have just changed the orientation of the axis, this is my axis 2 this is my axis 3 and this is a wooden rod. So, all the fibers are there and they are running along the length of the rod, along the length of the rod. So, when I see from this end, I just see dots, each dot represents a single fiber and it is the end of the fiber and all these fibers are held together by an adhesive, a resin or a matrix material. Okay. Now, think about it. Suppose, I take a material like this sample, I take a sample like this. So, I am looking at the rod and I am cutting, I am cutting a material from the end and I take a sample like this. Okay. So, in this case, so this is sample A. So, in sample A, huh, in sample A, this is my two axis. So, it has a thickness. So, actually sorry. So, I will just erase this. So, I will so, so let us just assume that I take I cut a sample which is of like this orientation. Okay. This is sample A and it has a thickness in the one direction. Okay. So, how does sample A look? Okay, this is how it looks and all the dots are here, this is my 2 axis, this is my 3 axis and this is my axis 1. And now in this, if I test it, so 2 axis, so 1 axis is what? It is the uh, longitudinal axis, the direction of fiber, right? What is 2 axis? It is let us say transverse axis and 3 axis is transverse prime. Okay. Right. So, if I want to find E t and E t prime, 
just by looking at the structure we will see that E t and E t prime will be same. Okay. Now, what I do is instead of this sample, I take another sample, but so this is sample 1 and then I take another sample and here. So, just to make picture clear this is my this thing, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3 and my sample is somewhere like this, like this. So, sample 2 is like this. Okay. So, but this nor this this normal to the surface is still direction 1 normal to the surface is still direction 1 and if normal to the surface is still direction 1 then I still see all these fiber ends and if I pull it in this thing in this direction. So, let us say this is direction 2 a and right this is direction 2 a then <coughs> E t in direction 2 a will be same as E t. Okay. It will be same because it is essentially the same material and I have just the orientation and all these things does not matter. So, regardless of this angle theta, regardless of this angle theta, as long as I am rotating the sample in the 2, 3 plane. right? So, if I am just rotating the sample in 2, 3 plane, the material properties in along the length of the sample will not change and this will. So, the material properties E t and E t prime will remain exactly the same as long as I keep on changing the material in 2, 3 plane, okay. which means that the material is isotropic in T t plane means that the material is isotropic in T t plane. That is why it is called transverse isotropy as transversely isotropic and if the material is transversely isotropic then we have to go and see what further simplifications we can make. So, if the material is transversely isotropic then what does that mean? So, suppose the material is transversely isotropic then C 2 2 and C 3 3 they will be same because 2 corresponds to the t axis and 3 corresponds to the t prime axis. So, C 2 2 and C 3 3 will be the same. The, so, so for, for transverse isotropy C 2 2 is equal to C 3 3. The other condition is Uh, C 1 2 and C 1 3 will be same. C 1 is 1 1 corresponds to L direction, 2 corresponds to T direction, 3 corresponds to T prime direction. So, C C 1 2 equals C 1 3 that is C L T equals C L T prime. Okay. So, that is there and C 5 5 and C 6 are same and finally, we can show that C 2 2 minus C 2 3 3 divided by 2 divided by 2 equals C 4 4. So, this is equal to C 2 2 minus C 3 3 divided by 2. So, in this case how many constants we have 1, 2, 3, uh, 4, 4 constants everything else is expressed in terms of others. 
So, for a transversely isotropic material, so for transverse actually it is 5, I counted wrong, 5 met constants for an anis for especially orthotropic in 3D 9, transversely isotropic 5 constants. So, and this is in 2, 3 plane. And what are, so what are these constants? C 1 1, C 1 2, C 2 2, C 2 3 and C 6 6, these are the 5 constants. What is C 2 2, uh, C 3 3, C 3 3 equals C 2 2, C 1 3 equals C 1 2, C 5 5 equals C 6 6 and C 4 uh, C 2 2 minus C 3 3 divided by 2 is equal to C 4 4 okay. so for transversely isotropic material that is the thing. So, we will continue this discussion tomorrow and tomorrow we will cover two more different types of materials, one is isotropic material and the other one is especially orthotropic material in a plane stress state, which is the most important material from the standpoint of this course. And that is what we will discuss today, tomorrow. And till then, uh, please uh, have a great day, have a great time and we will meet once again tomorrow at the same time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.